Welcome, church, to another installment of Take 5, our midweek reflection on Scripture. This week, we will be uh, taking a reading out of our summer Bible reading guide um, on June 25th, Thursday, by looking at 1 Samuel chapter 21 and 22, where we see David is fleeing for his life from Saul, um, as well as we look at the consequences of one of David's little sins. Last week, you remember that Pastor Bill had talked about how uh, Saul had disobeyed one of God's commands to completely wipe out the Amalekites and eventually his rejection as king over Israel. And so we see over the next few chapters from there that the spirit of God actually departs from Saul and is replaced with an evil spirit from the Lord. And then that spirit of God is then put onto, onto David uh, this actually opened the door for David's employment in the, in the presence of Saul to play a harp in order to soothe the spirit that God had placed onto Saul. And so over the time, we see that although Saul starts out really loving David, he becomes intensely jealous of David. And that slowly turns into uh, conceit for him. And eventually, uh, both concealed and open attempts to take David's life as his popularity grows. Uh, and so we see that uh, one of David's trusted friends, Jonathan, actually warns David of the newest attempt on his life. And so David flees Saul. He flees his wife. He flees his friends. And he, he flees from his home. And so that's where our story picks up in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 1. David went to Nob to Ahimelech the priest. Ahimelech trembled when he met him and asked, Why are you alone? Why is no one with you? David answered Ahimelech the priest, The king charged me with a certain matter and said to me, No one is to know anything about your mission and your instructions. Now, obviously, the first thing David does is he tells a lie. He was not uh, come with a mission from Saul. He was running away from Saul. Um, but David must have sound convincing enough because Ahimelech does, in fact, believe him. Um, but it was a lie. David was caught between a rock and a hard place trying to escape for his life, uh, as well as to get food for his men. We see that David asks for food for his men um, because they were in such a hurry that they couldn't get anything. And so he tells another lie and Ahimelech actually gives him the bread. And so we see that um, this falls under the category of one of those little white lies. And maybe that something we can relate to David. It certainly seems justified that David would tell this lie uh, in order to get the provisions he needs for food and for safety. Um, but later on, we see that this little white lie actually has some pretty severe consequences. Um, and maybe that's true for us as well today. It's pure situational ethics. We see that David is justifying the end with the means, something maybe we too are familiar with. Down in verse 7, there is a little fact that sometimes we may overlook, which is that there's actually a third person in the scenario, uh, an Edomite named Doeg, who is one of Saul's head shepherds. And he witnesses the interaction between Ahimelech and him giving him bread and safety. Um, he notices David. David notices him. Uh, and that will actually play a little bit later in the story. So we'll come back to Doeg later. Uh, but just before David leave, David requests a sword because he says that he, in his haste, have forgotten a sword, which is another lie. Um, and so we see David is continually lying out of fear uh, and out of desperation. But the worst is yet to come for David. Um, after his interaction with Ahimelech, David flees to Gath. Uh, which we know must have been out of desperation because that is in the territory of the Philistines, which is a neighboring country at war with Israel. Consequently, someone there notices who David is and tells the king of Gath and David out of fear for his life that the king might kill him, considering David was on the conquest of the Philistines a few months earlier. David decides to pretend that he is insane, to pretend that he's mad and crazy. He goes to doors, he goes to gates and starts slashing symbols onto them that don't make any sense. Uh, and he even starts to drool and froth at the mouth to try to convince everyone that he's mad which actually leads to one of the more humorous lines from the, the King of Gath, which says, look at the man, he is insane. Why bring him to me? 
Am I so short of madmen that you have to bring this fellow here to carry on like this in front of me? Must this man come to my house? And so with that, David is kicked out of Gath and now he's back on the run. And from there, David comes to the cave of Adulan. And starting in chapter 21, we see that his brothers and his family and friends hearing that he's come to that cave actually join him along with people who are in distress People who are in debt and people who are bitter come along to join David in the cave uh, to amount to about 400 men. And though it seems like a ragtag group of thugs and ne'er-do-wells that have joined David, actually these men go on to become one of David's mightiest soldiers under David's kingship later on. From there, they're able to seek refuge in a, a neighboring kingdom of Moab. And so David is able to find refuge. And so we might think that the story ends there after his fleeing from Saul, um, but it's not. There is a loose end hanging, uh, which is that whatever happened to Doeg? Well, Doeg decides to go to King Saul and tell him about what Ahimelech has done with David. And so Saul actually comes down to the village that Ahimelech in, the village of priests, uh, and he confronts Ahimelech is uh, of his decision to aid David and actually accuses him of treason. Now, Elimelech just believed David that he came with a mission from Saul, believes his lie. And so it was more out of an act of, of patriotism that he did that. Uh, certainly nothing out of an evil act. And yet because of David's lie, Ahimelech has to pay the price. And unfortunately that price is his life. Saul orders all the priests in the village to be killed. And though none of his soldiers are willing to do it, uh, Doag, who is a foreigner, an Edomite, is, is willing to do so and kills 85 innocent priests in all in that village, all because of David's lie. And so I, I think there are two truths to, to ponder from this story. And the first is this, that no one gets away with sin. It is a moral law of the universe that sin must be punished. Uh, we see that in, in Numbers chapter 32, where God says, be sure your sin will find you. We see that again in Galatians 6, 7, where Paul says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. It was a lesson that David had to learn the hard way, that eventually our chickens come to roost, that our skeletons in our closet come out. And from the tiniest transgression to the biggest crime, no one gets away with sin. And I think the reason this story hits home for me, as well as maybe some of you, is that David is not unlike us. We, we tend to cut corners uh, morally and ethically. We make excuses for our sins. And under pressure, we may do things that we normally wouldn't do. All the while hoping against hope that maybe our sins will not be found out. And these are the dangers of the little sins, but it does lead us to our second truth from this story, which is that the truth of the gospel of grace is seen among David and Ahimelech. When we sin, someone does have to pay the price. And in David's case, it was an entire village of innocent priests, 85 and all. But it's at precisely this point that we see the gospel that when we sin, Christ, our high priest himself, had to die. Christ paid for our sins as an innocent man, just as Ahimelech and the priests, as innocent priests, died for David's sin. But the difference between Jesus' death and Ahimelech's death is that because of Jesus' death, our sins are forgiven now and forever. And that's the good news of the gospel of grace, that because of our sins, they have to be paid for, but that someone already has, and that we can seek forgiveness because of an innocent man's death. And that is the heart of the gospel, that by God's grace, we can turn from our wayward lives to seek forgiveness, to repent of our sins, and God is willing to forgive us of those sins because of what Christ has done on the cross. And this applies just as much to us as it did to David. And so I encourage you that if you are feeling frustrated in the sin that you're in, whether it be an ongoing addiction or just something that's been gnawing away at you, that you can go to Jesus because of what he's done. 
and ask for forgiveness and grace will be given to you. Thank you for joining me on this take five and I hope that you have a blessed week.